For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used two skeins of Red Hearts Super Saver in Claret. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's an optional written pattern that can help out too. Link in the description if you'd like to grab that and follow along. We're using four stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it to your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're going to start off by doing some measuring. So the first measurement that we're going to need to figure out is from collarbone to collarbone. And then once when we have that measurement, we're going to make a chain that comes out to that length. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 10 inches or 26 centimeters. So go ahead and make that chain. And that comes out to about 40 chains. Now that we have our measurement from collarbone to collarbone, we will be inserting our stitch marker into that last chain. That will mark the curve that goes around our shoulder and now we're going to start working on the v-neck portion. So from this collarbone that we just ended at, we're now going to measure down the length of where we want the v-neck to end. And mine just so happens to even out, mine that came out to another 10 inches or 26 centimeters. So I will be making another chain that comes out to that length and you guys can go ahead and adjust it to whatever measurement you guys have. And get a stitch marker ready because we will insert our stitch marker into that loop as well. And this section for me is also another 40 chains. Now that we've just finished this portion of our chain, we are going to grab our stitch marker again, insert it into that last chain, and then this is going to be the last bit of our collar that we're going to have to go into. So we're going to measure from the v-neck portion that we just ended at back up to the first chain that we did, closing off the v-neck. And I'm going to make another chain of 10 inches or 26 centimeters or roughly 40 chains again. So by now that we have our three sections to our chain, we should have one really long one. So what we're going to do is insert our last stitch marker into this last chain that we just made for ourselves. Then once we have that, we will be slip stitching it into the first chain that we did. But right before we do that, we're going to run our thumb along one side of our chain, making sure that it's all facing one direction. And then once we know that, we're going to slip stitch it into that first chain, forming a circle. And slip stitching it into this first chain is fairly simple. All we're going to do is insert our hook into this first chain that we made. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now everything is all closed up. And then once we have this, we're going to go in with our first row of single crochet. So what we're going to do is do a chain up of one. And then from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every loop that we have, going all the way down until we reach our first stitch marker and then we're going to be doing an increase of two into that loop. So we're just going to do the first single crochet together. So into this first available loop that we have, we will be inserting our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our first single crochet. And then from here, just put one into every loop until we reach our first stitch marker and then I'll meet you guys back. We've made our way over to our first stitch marker and this is going to be our shoulder stitch marker so we're actually just going to be doing an increase of two into this loop. So really quickly we're going to take this stitch marker out but don't put it away too far because we're going to have to put it back in but into that loop we're going to be going in with one single crochet and then also into that same loop one more single crochet. And then the place where I'm going to be inserting my stitch marker is going to be the last single crochet that we just did because we only did two because typically if we did three we'd just be inserting it into the middle one but we're going to be inserting it into that last one the one that is closest to the v-neck portion but now that we have that now we can go in putting one single crochet into every chain that we have going down to the next stitch marker this next stitch marker will be the v portion of our stitch marker so we're going to be doing an increase of three into there so i'll meet you guys back once we get over to this middle stitch marker We've made our way over to the next stitch marker, which just so happens to be the middle one. So this one will have an increase of three into that loop. So we're going to take the stitch marker out, but don't put it too far. We will need to insert that back in. 
So into this next loop, we're going to be going in with three single crochets. So here is one single crochet, two into that same loop, and then one more into that same loop. And then for this one, we will be inserting our hook into that second single crochet that we did. So the one directly into the middle. And then once we have that, you guys guessed it, go ahead and go all the way down with more single crochets until we reach this next stitch marker that we have. And then we will be doing an increase of two since this is where our shoulder is, but I'll meet you guys back just one more time so that we can do that. And then also slip stitch it into this first loop that we have over here. We've made our way over to our last stitch marker and into this one, we will be doing an increase of two. So let's take out this stitch marker. Then into this last one, we're going to be going in with one and then two single crochets. And then once when we have this set of two, we're going to want to make sure that we insert our stitch marker into the same loop that we inserted this other shoulder stitch marker into. So we did an increase of two on this side and we made sure to put our stitch marker into the loop that was closest to the V neck. So into this set of two, we're going to be inserting our hook, not into the one that's right next to the hook, but into the one that is right after that so that it matches the other side. And then once when we have inserted this stitch marker, we can now connect everything together. But right before we connect it, we're going to want to make sure that everything is facing the same direction so that it's not twisted in any way. And then once when we are sure that it's all facing one direction, we can insert our hook into this first loop with a slip stitch to close this off. And we have our first row of our collar. So really quickly, right before we get into the next row, I just wanted to show you guys what we have. And we have a very nice triangle. But once we have this, we're going to be going in with just one more row of single crochets, doing an increase where we have our stitch markers again. But this time we're going to be going in through the back loops. So let's do that together right now. So starting off the second row of our collar with each other, we're going to do a chain up of one. And from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every back loop that we have until we reach our stitch marker. So let's do the first few together into this first loop that we have. We will be inserting our hook in through that back loop. So we would typically go in through these loops, but here we want a little bit of ribbing. So we're going to insert our hook into that back loop and then single crochet. Let's do another one together into this next back loop, insert our hook and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we reach our first stitch marker. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can increase together. We've made our way over to that first stitch marker and we're going to be doing another increase of two into that back loop. So we're going to take out this stitch marker and then into this next loop, we're going to go in with one single crochet and then two single crochet. And then once when we get here, we will be inserting our stitch marker into that next loop that we have. So the one that is right next to our hook, the one that's closest to the V neck portion, we'll be inserting our stitch marker back into there. And then from here, continue doing back loop single crochets until we get to the next stitch marker, which is the V neck one. That one has an increase of three. So we're going to be doing another increase of three into that stitch marker. So I'll meet you guys back once we get there. We are now at our V neck stitch marker and we are going to be doing an increase of three into here. So we're going to take this guy out. And then go into this back loop with three single crochets into that next loop. So there's one, two, and then three. From here, we're going to insert our stitch marker into that second loop from our hook that we have, because this is the middle one. And then from here, continue to do back loop single crochets until we reach our next stitch marker. And this next stitch marker is going to be exactly the same as the other shoulder one. It's going to be an increase of two. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we've made in this row. So I'll meet you guys back once we get to that next stitch marker. We're now at this last stitch marker. So we're going to take this guy out for now and then into this back loop, we're going to be going in with another set of two single crochet. So here's one, here's two. We will be inserting our hook into the second loop that we have in our hook. So into this one, we have one loop and then our hook. And then we should have just one more loop right in between where we're at and then our first single crochet. So we're going to do a back loop single crochet into that loop that does count as this portion's 
single crochet over to this other stitch marker that we have right here and all the numbers should be good to go but now that we have our last single crochet into this last back loop into this first single crochet that we have we're going to go in with a slip stitch and from here we're going to chain up one and cut and then we will be all done with our collar so really quickly this is what we should have we should have a pretty decent looking triangle within the two rows that we just did but now that we have this done we can now get started on the body portion so we will very lovingly tuck this out to the side and then we can get started on the rest so getting started on the body portion we're going to grab our same yarn make a slip knot our same five millimeter hook and we're going to start off by making a chain that goes from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of the top to be and mine is going to come out to about 15 inches or 38 centimeters or about 55 chains now that we have our chain the next thing that we're going to be doing is going in with a row of slip stitches so all that is is we're going to start off by blocking that last chain do a chain up of one and then we're going to be inserting our hook into that loop that we blocked off or our second chain from our hook with a slip stitch so we're just going to insert our hook into that second chain we're going to yarn over pull through everything on the hook let's do this just one more time together we're going to insert our hook into that next available loop in our chain should have two loops on our hook yarn over pull through everything and we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left in our chain and then we'll meet each other back because we will be doing an increase at the end of this row we've made it all the way down with our first row of slip stitches and like i said now we're going to be doing our increase so our increase when it comes to these slip stitch rows is a little bit different what we're going to do is do a chain out of two from this row flip our work and then into the second loop from our hook we're just going to go in with a back loop slip stitch so into this loop that's closest to our hook we will be ignoring that guy and then into that second loop we're going to be going into that back loop with a slip stitch so insert yarn over pull through everything and then we're going to from here just put one back loop slip stitch into every loop that we have going back down our row so let's do the next back loop slip stitch together really quickly we're just going to insert our hook into that back loop we're going to yarn over pull through everything and then once we get to the end we will be keeping that end blunt so we're going to do a chain up of one flip our work do more back loop slip stitches coming all the way back down once we get into this last loop we'll be doing one more increase together and then i'll talk to you guys about the rest of this top We've just made our way back down to our increase side of our row of slip stitches and we're just going to do one more increase together so all this is is a chain out of two just like how we did in the last clip flip our work and then into the second chain from our hook go in with a back loop slip stitch and then do back loop slip stitches all the way down until we get to the end once we get to the end do a chain up of one flip our work and then bring it on back down remembering to increase once we get down to this side and we will keep doing this until this portion reaches the front of our body but while we want this to reach the front of our body remember that once you do put this up to yourself that you're stretching it out as much as it can stretch because this is going to have a little bit of give to it but once we have that i'll meet you guys back so that we can have a little portion that shoots straight up to our shoulder so that we can soon after that connect it to the collar that we made for ourselves previously now that we have this underarm portion that goes from our underarm and then curves over to the front of our body now we can start to go in with our shoulder chunk and we did make sure that we ended up on this increase portion so once we get from here we're just going to do a chain up of however many inches we need so that this can reach the tip of our shoulder and just to let you guys know the base measurement that i have from this side to this side is currently two and a half inches or seven centimeters and that is unstretched because remember this does stretch quite a bit and then i have also put this up to myself and measured out to see how long i need my chain to be so that it can reach the top of my shoulder and that is a total of four inches or roughly 10 centimeters so i'm going to start off by making a chain from where i'm at of 15 chains and now that we have our chain we're just going to go back in with back loop slip stitches so that we can finish off this shoulder chunk and start connecting it to our collar that we have 
So in order to work our way up to the next row, we're going to block off this last chain, do an extra chain up of one, and then into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna be going in with a back loop slip stitch. So there are these two loops that we would go into. We're gonna go into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. Let's do the next one together again. Insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we get to the end, which is going to be blunt. That is going to be a chain up of one, flip our work, and then do more back loop slip stitches. And then this end will be blunt as well, but I'll meet you guys back once when we do work our way back up to the top so that I can tell you guys the length that I need in order to work my way over to the collar. So we're back really quickly. We just went all the way down doing back loop slip stitches into our chain and we are into the body portion. And I just wanted to show you guys and remind you guys that we will continue going into the back loops with slip stitches until we make our way all the way down. And go ahead and keep doing that and then I'll meet you guys back. We've just made our way back down with our row of back loop slip stitches all the way down past this little shoulder chunk chain that we made for ourselves in the previous clip. And like I said, I'm just back to show you guys that this is going to have no increases, no decreases. So once we get into that last loop, all we're going to do is do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then just go back down with back loop slip stitches. And I'm honestly just going to be doing one more row. So in total, I will have four rows of this little shoulder chunk of back loop slip stitches, and then we will be connecting it into our collar but if you guys need a bigger chunk go ahead and adjust for your size but just make sure that when you guys do end that you guys are ending on this top end so that we can attach it onto our collar instead of on the bottom because we'd have to work our way up to the top anyways so go ahead and do that and then i'll meet you guys back so we are back and we have our tiny 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 shoulder chunk that we have and now that I have the length that I need, I'm going to insert it into the stitch marker that I have along the side of our V-neck. We do wanna make sure that we are inserting our body portion into the side that has the increases of two. So this is an increase of two, this is an increase of two, and then this is an increase of three. We wanna make sure that this remains on the bottom. So, you know, move that around, maneuver that around, however you guys need to. But just to let you guys know, the base length that I have right here, I have a total of a little less than three inches or roughly eight centimeters. That's just as a reference for you guys. And I have a total of 18 rows, including this underarm portion all the way down to here. So now that we have all that out of the way, what we can do is slip stitch it into this stitch marker that we have. And then right before we do that, <laughs> I will say that if you guys didn't put stitch markers back in, if it fell out, whatever, then you guys are actually going to just take a look at that increase of two that you guys have. And then into the loop that is closest to the V-neck, that is going to be the loop that we stick our body portion into. So we want to have that extra loop for the back so that that back panel can go straight across. And then once when we have figured all that out, now we can slip stitch it together. So how we're going to do that, obviously, this is our increase of two. This is my stitch marker that's in here. We're going to take our work and then we can now take out that stitch marker. But remember which loop it was in. And then we're going to insert our hook into that loop. Once when our hook is in that loop, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch. And now it is nice and connected. And then once when we have this, we are going to start doing more back loop slip stitches but decreasing into the two loops that's closest into the base into every row until we get all the way down to our v-neck portion so it's going to be a little bit but we can make it through so now that this row is connected we're actually going to need to work our way up to the next row so what we're going to do is slip stitch into the next loop that we have that's going towards the v-neck so we're going to insert our hook yarn over pull through everything and now we're going to start working into the body portion and then into these first two back loops we're going to be doing a decrease of two so into this first back loop that we have, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. And then once we have that, we're actually just going to take this loop that's closest to our hook and just pull all the way through just like that. And that is our back loop slip stitch 
decrease of two. And then once we have that, we're going to go back down with more back loop slip stitches, keeping the bottom of this portion blunt because that is the bottom of the top. Once we make it to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and do more back loop slip stitches coming all the way back up towards the collar, leaving the last two loops because we will be doing another decrease in there together just as a refresher, and then we can get on with the rest of this portion. We are back with this row and we have gone all the way down leaving the last two loops and we are right next to the base so we're going to be doing a decrease into those last two loops. So a decrease one more time is inserting our hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then into that next back loop. Once when we are here we're going to yarn over and then pull through everything that's on our hook. So we're going to yarn over, pull through one, two, and three. And that is our decrease. Once we get here, we're going to slip stitch into that next loop that we have into the base. And then now this row is all closed up. And so since we're here, we might as well just do another decrease together. We're going to slip stitch into that next available loop so that we can work our way up to that next row. We're going to flip our work and we're going to start off by doing a decrease together just one more time. So into this next back loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, into that next back loop we're going to yarn over pull through everything on our hook right away so pull through one two three and then go ahead and do more back loop slip stitches going all the way back down work our way back up and then we're going to decrease into the last two loops that we have on our base and we're going to keep doing that all the way down until we reach this middle v-neck stitch marker we're going to cut and tie and then end up doing the same exact thing on the other side but i'll meet you guys back once we have this first half done So we should have something that looks a little bit like this once when we are done with our first front panel. And now that we have this one done, we have cut and tied. And the next thing we're going to do is actually do the exact same thing that we did here, but along the other side. So we're going to go in with a little underarm chunk, same amount of loops, same amount of rows. And then once we have that, we're going to shoot straight up with a chain for our shoulder chunk, same amount of everything. And then we're going to attach it into the stitch marker that we have along the other side. Remembering that the stitch marker should be into the increase of two, but into the loop that's closest to the v-neck portion. And then we're going to do back loop slip stitches while decreasing into the two loops that's closest to the base, coming all the way down until we reach the middle. And then once we reach the middle, we will be not cutting and tying because we are going to go in with a seam along the middle so that we can close up the front portion together. So go ahead and get all of that done, and then I'll meet you guys back. This is what we should have once we have both front panels all done up. Don't mind these guys because these will be woven in later. But now that we don't have any more loops left to go into into the v-neck portion, we can now just connect everything with a row of outside loop single crochets. But right before we do that, we're going to want to lay our work down flat just like this. And then take a look and see where we have this little ribbing row that we left for ourselves when we did our back loop single crochets when we were doing the collar. And then once when we figure out where that is, we're going to want to sandwich that on top of each other because we want this to be along the outside of our work because we want this to be shown and we want the seam to be on the inside. So since we can see it up on top right here, all I'm gonna do is sandwich my work over this way and then we can start going in with our row of outside loop single crochets to close up this front panel together. So outside loop single crochets is fairly simple. All we're going to do is insert our hook into that other corner loop that we have since our hook is already into this side going to insert it into that other front panel's corner. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and now they are nice and attached. And then from here, we're going to go in through the front loop into the front panel and then into the back loop into the back panel. And we're doing it that way so that we can get some ribbing along the front. So all that is is into this next available loop that we have in the front. We're going to insert our hook in through this front loop. And then into the next available loop that we have in the back panel, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop. And from here, single crochet. Let's do just two more together. Into the next available loop into the front panel, insert our hook into that front loop. And then the next available loop in the back panel, back loop, single crochet. And one more together into this next loop that we have. Go into that front loop. And then into this next loop that we have in the back panel, go into that back loop and then single crochet. And then we're gonna keep doing this all the way up until we don't have any more loops left to go into. We will cut and tie, and then we'll meet each other back so that we can start talking about the back portion. 
So this is what the entirety of our front panel should look like once when we have seamed up the edges. This is flipped right side out. Let's flip this over just so you guys can see what the inside seam looks like. This is our single crochet that we have just done. We did a cut and tie once we made it to the end and now we can start working on the back. And the back is actually going to be extremely similar to the way that we did the front. So I already have a little bit of it done. So let me just show you guys what we're going to be doing. Getting started on the back portion, we're actually going to do the same exact thing as we did along the front when it comes to the underarm portion plus the shoulder chunk that we have. And this is the piece that I have right here. So I'm just going to lay it on top just to show you guys that it is exactly the same. So, so far we should have done one, two, and then now three of these underarm and shoulder chunks that are exactly the same. But I'm just going to lay this on top. It's the same amount of loops, same amount of everything. And then once when we have that, we are now going to just attach it into the next available loop that we have into the base when it comes to this back portion that goes straight across. And then when we're going straight across, we're going to go back and forth with back loop slip stitches while slip stitching into the base, just like how we did for the V-neck portion. But since this is going straight across, so we're not going to have any decreases at all. We're just going to keep going all the way down until we hit our middle point. And you guys are going to want to figure that out at this point. I already have my stitch marker in, but you're basically just gonna do back loop slip stitches all the way down until we hit that middle stitch marker, cut and tie, and then do this entire sequence one more time along this side, and then we're going to meet back so that we can seam it up basically the same way that we did the front portion. So I'm just gonna show you guys where I'm going to insert my back panel and then I'm just going to start it off with you guys really quickly and then I'll let you guys have at it from there. So when it comes to attaching the back panel onto the back portion of our collar that we have, as you guys can see, I do have a stitch marker in here, but that's just to show you guys where we're going to be going into. So I can just take that out really quickly. But for the shoulder chunk that we have along the front, this is the loop that it's into. And the only thing that we have to do is see the loop that is right next to it that is available. Insert our hook into there. From there, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch. And now this little chunk that we have for our underarm and our shoulder chunk is now all attached. And then once when we have that, we're going to be slip stitching into the next available loop to work our way up to the next row. We're going to flip our work and then now we're going to be working within the body portion that we have and that is just going to be a bunch of back loop slip stitches just like how we've been doing. So into this first back loop really quickly. Let's go into that together. Yarn over, pull through everything and that's it. Just keep doing back loop slip stitches all the way down. Once we make it to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work and then come back down towards the base with more back loop slip stitches. And then we're just going to go all the way down until we don't have any more loops left into this row. Slip stitch into that next available loop to close this row off. And to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into the next available loop. And then go back down with back loop slip stitches. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we hit our stitch marker. Or our middle point. We're going to cut and tie and then do the exact same thing one more time on the other side. And then I'll meet you guys back once when we have both of these back panels done so that we can connect it all together. So we're back with our two back panels. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is seam the back just like how we did the front. And then we're gonna seam the sides, but we will get to the other side once when we're done with the middle portion. So seaming up the back is going to be exactly the same way that we seamed up the front. It's going to be outside single crochets, so I'm just going to do the first few with you guys. But into the first loop that we have that is right next to our base, we're going to be inserting our hook in through that front panel loop. And then also into that back panel loop, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything on the hook, if I can. And then once when we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything so it's nice and secure. And from here, we're going to do our outside single crochets. So into this first loop that we have, we're going to go into that front loop and then into the back panel. We're going to go into that back loop. That is the same loop. There we go. Once we have that single crochet closed. And that is pretty much it. Go ahead and keep doing this all the way down and then cut and tie once we get to the end. We are now all done with seaming up the middle portion of the back and now we need to seam up the side just like how we did on this side. 
and it's basically going to be exactly the same thing that we've done for the front and the back except we don't have to go into the outside loops we can just go into the loops like regular and we're going to be doing that for this portion and then also for this little shoulder chunk that we have up here as well and once we have that we're going to be going around our armhole with a single crochet row just like how we have over here so let's get started on this portion really quickly so right before we get started with seaming up the sides, I did insert some stitch markers along the bottoms because I do want to have a slit that is a little bit longer than the bottom border that we're going to add onto the bottom. And all I did was inserted my stitch marker on both ends and that came up to about an inch and a half or four centimeters or about seven loops. So now that we have this, you guys can have a slit, not a slit, whatever you guys want to do. But now we can get started on seaming up the sides. So when it comes to seaming up the sides, we're going to start at this underarm portion and then we're going to work our way down towards our stitch markers. And that's going to be super easy. We're just going to insert our hook into the first loop that we have in this corner and the first loop that we have in the next corner into the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn, pull through, chain up one to secure. And then from here, it's going to be exactly the same way that we did the front and the back, except we don't need to do the outside loops. So we're just going to go into this next available loop in the front panel, and then next available loop in the back panel. And then I will also be hiding in these three tails as we work. So I'm just gonna fold it over the loops that my hook is under, and then single crochet. And that is how we do the first one. Let's do the next one together really quickly. We're going to insert our hook into that next available loop in the front panel, and then into the next available loop that we have into the back panel, there we go and then we're going to single crochet everything closed. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way down until we hit our stitch markers. Once we hit our stitch markers, go ahead and cut and tie, and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the shoulder chunk and the armhole. We have just finished up seaming up the entirety of our side portion that we have. And what we're gonna do next is go into the shoulder chunk and then also just go all the way around with the row of single crochet around our armhole together. So what we're gonna do is just make a if I can, slip knot with our yarn, and then insert our hook into the first kind of loop that we have that's closest to our collar. And this portion isn't gonna be any real loops for us to go into. So we're just gonna have to find one, insert our yarn, pull through, single crochet. And then this is gonna be exactly the same way that we did the side. We're just gonna find a loop in the front panel and then also a loop into the back panel and then single crochet. And since my shoulder chunk is super small, I'm just gonna do one more, but you guys keep going for as long as you guys need. Once when you have that, you're gonna do a chain up of one, and then you're just gonna go all the way around with the row of single crochet until you don't have any more loops left to go into. You're gonna slip stitch into that first single crochet that you made for yourself, chain up one and cut, and then we can get started on the bottom border together. So we are back, we have seamed up the sides and then we've also done our armholes and our shoulder chunk and this side's done so you guys can go ahead and do this other side now but since I'm done I'm just going to go ahead and get started on this bottom border. I already have one side done so we're just going to do the back side together which is going to be the exact same thing as the front. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is super simple. We're actually just going to be inserting our hook into this corner loop that we have. It doesn't matter which corner. And we're just going to be going straight across with a row of single crochet to start this off. So we're going to grab our yarn, if I can find the end, make a slip knot, insert that onto our hook. We're going to pull through, chain up one to secure, and then go ahead and go all the way down with single crochets. There's not any real loops for us to go into, so just find one, commit to it, and then I'll meet you guys back once we get to the other corner. We have made our way over to the other side of our bottom border with our row of single crochet. The next thing we're going to have to do is go in with the row of double. So the first thing we're going to do is do a chain up of three and flip our work. That chain up of three counts as a double crochet. And from here, we're just going to be going all the way down, putting one double crochet into every loop that we have. And that's going to be it for this row. So I'll meet you guys back once we've reached the end of this row. Now that we've made our way down with our row of double crochets, we're going to do front post and back post double crochets. So these are going to be fairly simple. How we work our way up to the next row is do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. We're going to be flipping our work and then into the first two double crochet posts that we have, we're going to be putting 
one front post double crochet into the first one and then another front post double crochet into the next one so let's do that together we're going to prepare for a double crochet just like normal but instead of going in through these top loops like we normally do we're actually going to be going in through these gaps in between the double crochets that we put in the previous row so into this first one we're going to insert our hook behind this double crochet and then we're going to bring our hook around the other side and then from here we're going to double crochet just like normal and that is our first front post double crochet let's do the next one together we're going to prepare for a double crochet go behind that next double crochet post that we have in the previous row bring it through the other side and then double crochet just like normal then those are our first two front post double crochets and now we're going to do two back posts to get a little bit of a different ribbing and that's going to be exactly the same but instead of going into the front we're going to be going behind our work so let's do those together as well we're going to prepare for a front post no we're going to prepare for a back post double crochet bring our hook behind our work and then into this next double crochet that we have in the previous row we're just going to bring our hook next to it and then we're going to bring it over and through that gap that we have right next to it and then double crochet like normal let's do that just one more time we're going to prepare for a double crochet go behind our work and then in through that next gap that we have in between those two double crochets in the previous row and then over that double crochet through the next loop pull through and from here pull through two pull through two just like a normal double crochet so we have two front posts and two back posts right here and we're going to keep doing this alternating between two front and two back post double crochets going all the way down and then once we make it to the end we're going to be doing one more row of front and back post double crochets and that's going to be fairly simple we're just going to be putting a front post double crochets wherever we have a front post and then a back post double crochet wherever we have the back post but i'll meet you guys back so that we can do that together We are all finished up with our first row of front post and back post double crochets and we're just going to be doing the same thing one more time. So we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet always. We're going to flip our work and then whatever type of post double crochet we have in the previous row we're just going to do the same thing right on top of that. So this first one is actually a back post double crochet so we're going to insert our hook in through the back, yarn over, pull through. And then the next one is also a back post so we're going to go into that back post with another back post on top of that and now we're at our front posts so what we're going to do is just yarn over going through that front post these may be a little bit easier since we already have the first ones done in the previous row but either way go ahead and just keep doing that all the way down and then once you guys reach the end go ahead and cut and tie and then just do the same thing that we did here on this bottom border on the other side we have just finished up going in with the bottom border on both sides the front and the back and one of the last things that we have to do is go in with the little x detail that we have within the v-neck i already have one side already finished up and i'm just going to tell you guys the measurements of mine and then i'll have you guys figure out the chains for yourself so for this first side i measured up about an inch or three centimeters and inserted my hook and then from there i made a chain and then i connected it to the opposite side that was two inches up or five centimeters and the chain that I have in between is a chain of nine, but this will be adjusted to whatever v-neck size that you guys are going to have. But that's all up to you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and do my second one, have it cross over, and then I'll meet you guys back really quickly. And now that we have our X detail all attached, the last thing that we have to do is weave in all of our ends. Now that we've woven in our ends, this is our classic sweater vest with some modern twists to it. This top was super surprisingly longer to do than I thought but the time put in was completely worth it because it turned out amazing and if you guys agree give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you liked about it but if you didn't give it a thumbs down but let me know how we can improve if you love it be sure to hit that bell so you know when there's new uploads for you and be sure to share us on Twitter Pinterest Instagram and Facebook links down below if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel, links to Poshmark, Depop, and Etsy are down there too, along with the tools used. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.